We are in November 2023, and that's our second session this month, and we are the Women Matters in the Wisdom Factory .net. And today, after a long time, we say hello again to Monia. She couldn't stay with us for almost half a year, I think. It was quite a long time, and I'm really happy that you are here. And before we go into some topic... We do a check-in and you can start, Monia. Okay. Well, I'm happy to be back again. It's really half a year. I can't believe it. Well, it was August. Long time. <laughs> it was August. Yeah, well, anyway, I have a new hip now on my left side as well. And it's just perfect. Knock on wood. Uh, like the other one I had seven years ago, and it was only uh, five days. I was only five days in the hospital. Last time I was 12, if I remember correctly. So this has also, uh, they have new methods now. And uh, seven years ago, I was one of the first who got this kind of operation where you don't cut any nerves, so they just bend everything. and. Afterwards, you're much easier on your feet again. And now I'm, well, I'm just trying to pick up everything. And yeah, what I was talking to Heidi before uh, is that I'm still wrangling with my dreams. They are still rather tiring and I've almost challenged every time so I really hesitate to go to sleep because during the day, everything is fine. I'm not challenged. I am in control of everything. And in my dreams, it's just, yeah, it's it's really, I wonder if you could talk about sometime about dreams again. Uh, that's about what I'm really interested at the present because it's annoying. And... I wonder why I can't dream at all. So that's that would be really perfect. Not having any rem any memory of dreams, uh, but well. Anyway, I pass on to whoever feels bursting. <laughs> um, I'll speak up. I'm Christine in Carlsbad, California. Uh. This week in the States is Thanksgiving on Thursday, so major holiday. Most people have two days off, Thursday, Friday. Um, Tom and I usually take the week off because we have found that people schedule appointments and then they cancel appointments. <laughs> Things get hectic over the holiday and people think that they're going to want to come in and then they realize that it's something that they can dispense with. So we end up taking the time off to uh, just relax a little bit. So looking forward to that. Um, Thanksgiving is a lot of work if you're the cook. A lot of, I don't know, I don't think anybody in Europe cooks a full turkey. I don't know if that's a thing anywhere else, <laughs> but cooking a big, you know, 18 pound turkey in your oven, it's it's an ordeal and all the dishes and all the pies and all the food, but um, it's fun. I like to cook, so I don't really mind. It's just, uh, I have to make sure I've got a good playlist going and maybe uh, a glass of wine on the side. <laughs> Although I have to make sure I don't make too many mistakes. Uh, I can't drink too much because I will forget ingredients or something stupid like that. Um, yeah, pretty things are pretty good. Uh, feels like, you know, the pace of life is, is a little bit too quick, would like things to slow down a little bit, but that's, um, you know, something to work on a goal maybe for 2024 and, uh, my family's well, my daughter, oldest daughter's turning 32 this week. So we took her and her boyfriend out to dinner, uh, last night to celebrate her birthday, which was fun. And, um. I don't know. That's about it. I will pass on to uh, Hanalee. 
Thank you, Christine. I'm Hanli, I'm in South Africa. And um, I'm delighted to see you, Monia. Welcome back. We really missed you, really, really. <laughs> it's not the same without you, any of you for that matter. Um, really part of making my day when I'm here with you, with you ladies. It's just part of, it's like part of my blood in my cells. So thank you for that. I just came out of a session with a friend that I um, haven't spoken to for quite a while. And it was just beautiful to reconnect again. And it's like nothing changed. You know, it's like we haven't spoken for more than a year. And it was just wonderful to be together again. And something that he mentioned that was really sitting with me was he's a, he's a lecturer at, and he's teaching positive psychology at a university in the UK, in London. And he said he went for a tough time. We really couldn't connect to the material that he's teaching, but something shifted for him where he now feels it's living through him. And that for me was just so beautiful. So as I come, came into here straight after that, I could really feel it in myself when he spoke about it, that he, it's living through him. And that was just beautiful. And I wanted to bring that in here today. Thank you. I'm complete and I'm passing. Oh, by the way, we have, really interesting weather parts of the country has heat waves and here we have rain which is off season completely and it's cold today so i had to take out some warm clothes our suitcases and stuff so it's interesting to be alive right now with just in terms of weather conditions and i'll pass to gertrude yeah i'm gertrude from germany in the middle of Germany and I'm also very happy to see you again and it was always like is Monia coming <laughs> and no not this time um good news we had my, one of my daughters with the baby uh being here for several days and this is just the friendliest baby you can think of she's <laughs> it's amazing so she's also when you go for a walk or so she says to everybody hello <laughs> and it smiles in the restaurant to other people or yeah it, it's just I mean it's heartwarming to to just have her around um Yep, and and so that was a nice thing. And uh, we had a whiff. Yeah, it's it's a pre because we don't have all the people together yet. But uh, we had a pre workshop or a pre training weekend from WeFlow, the stewardship course, and this was really deep and very and the first time I had this feeling everybody was in one room but me <laughs> I was on screen and normally this makes a distance or this yeah so I don't feel that connected if they are, can touch each other or see like in a in a physical way see each other uh, but this time I just didn't restrain myself I I was just completely out there and when I had to say something and so I got the message back that my presence made a difference for them all guys yeah so that that was really really nice Yo. speaking of a topic I I'm I don't have one like right here so I'm pretty happy to go with whatever is emerging. For example, dreams. <laughs> yeah. So Heidi. Yes, I already spoke and I was muted. <laughs> I, yeah, check in. I'm again alone. I had a lot of people here in the last weeks and months and now for the first time for quite a while I am completely alone and that's a bit strange but I don't feel alone I'm quite in a good mood and um, 
do things on the land and work with the dogs and things like that. And um, I'm intrigued by several topics. The one is the dreams. The other one is the the life, which is going uh, slow, um, quick. And the other thing, which I also realized lately, that things go through. You said, your colleague said, it's, it's going through him. And strangely, this morning I had a coaching circle and there was, um, I, I, um, as my coaching um, contribution, I draw um, a picture. I don't know if you can see that. That that up here is the universe, and the universe brings things to people, and there are bad things like a gun. There are good things here, and um, here is a person who is not um, not wanting to have anything, but the others take all this things which come down from the universe and make a little hole and take it and let it flow through them. I really had the impression this morning that it goes through you. And then out of this comes uh, the the earth is greening, the, the, the plants come out and so on so by, by the flowing down of, of uh, what you are working through of the gifts with the universe is offering to you. So for me, uh, this all these things have a certain certain connection. And also the dreams, I mean, they flow through too, you know? And the question is what, do they want to, to tell you something or not? And uh, I don't know. I'm open to all of these topics. Do you work with, um, with dreams, uh, Christine? in your practice, in your um, work? Yeah, I mean, if people come in saying they had a dream, we will, we will talk about it. I don't necessarily encourage people to keep a dream journal or anything like that, but yeah. Um, and people tend to interpret their dreams a little bit too literally or concretely. And so a lot of dream exploration is really trying to look more at symbols and um, the feeling, what often is the most important thing is the underlying feeling from the dream that can maybe tell you a little bit more than the content or the story of a dream. Yeah. Can that be a topic? How are you handling your dreams? Yeah, I, I can connect to that. that I, I remember that I tried sometime, I uh, tried to get the feeling or get uh, the verbs or get the adjectives of my dream when I write it down. Um, but I, I'm, I can't really apply the feeling of my dreams to the feeling of my waking experience. Because in my dream, I murdered someone. I threw him over, a, uh, I wanted to throw him into the river and he didn't make it to the water, he just fell down. And I <laughs> I dreamt I bought a car, a small car for 40,000 euros secretly from my husband. <laughs> and I told him in the morning, this night I bought a car for 40,000, and he just didn't react at all. So, <laughs> and yeah, because in my dream, I was wondering how to br bring it uh, across to him. And yeah, I wouldn't dream of buying a car, but still, so why, why do I dream of buying a car? Uh, of course, I'm, if I compare myself to a car, I'm much more flexible than my husband is right now and moving around more than he does. But still, and this was just one of the dreams I'm, I'm really, uh, I couldn't interpret at all or fit in into my, how I feel or how I am right now. So do you see a connection between those two dreams? Well, the other dream was about uh, one of, an, a friend of mine many decades back 
and I haven't seen him in a long time now, and uh, I see no reason to kill him. <laughs> so it's, uh, um, he's one of my most faithful acquaintances I have, and it's always a pleasure uh, to see him. No idea. So it's, it's I was really amazed where this comes from. I don't know. Uh, and I had a time when I uh, when I wrote down my dreams, I sort of really could interpret them, what they meant for me at that time. But right now, it's just like I lost the connection to uh, to the dream maker. Uh, maybe I will read Mindel again and then see what he says about the dream maker. Uh, Arnold Mindel whom I really enjoyed working with. Finally, you smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've also done a lot of work with Robert Marsh, dream work with Robert Marsh, the shaman. But what came up for me, if it was my dream, that's why I've been taught by Robert, is if, it's, if it was my dream, the one about the car, for me, a car represents movement. For you, it might represent something very different. It's like moving from one stage of your life to another or moving out of a stage of our lives into a new stage, for example. So there's definitely something about movement in whatever way. And as I'm sharing that with you now, I feel it in my, in my, in the top of my head. So in my, in my crown chakra, so to speak. So I feel it up here. So it's my connection, my connection with the universe. And not necessarily your connection, but my connection. That's where I feel it. It's like, and I feel it in my body now, like it's expansion of your aware of my awareness, if it was my dream. So there's some traveling, so to speak in my dream into another state of being perhaps happening in my in my own experience of life and my awareness of life itself. And if it was my dream about killing somebody that was very dear to me, I feel it in my throat. It in my throat area, it's about perhaps speaking about, about that relationship in a different way. So it changed in some way. That's what's coming up. If it was my dream, it it's taking on another, um, another, and I feel of my whole body. So my whole body's coming alive as I'm sharing this with you. It's like coming alive in a different way. So the old way is no longer relevant, but there's something new about it happening. So I, I, in my own dreams, when I experience I'm killing something or someone is killed, it's more about out with the old, in with something new, so to speak, not the the sense of killing someone. That makes sense. Thank you. I'm complete. Uh, thank you. But I've never before ever have dreamt of killing somebody. So that was really uh, unexpected. And and I was very very efficient, so I really I pushed him over that ledge, and yeah, without any remorse or any uh, feeling, just get him over there. Hmm. How did you feel when you woke up after that dream? Hmm? The feeling? How did how did you feel when you woke up after the dream? Confused. Confused. <laughs> I didn't know what to make of it. So, and even, uh, well, of course, I know I have a feeling that I want uh, to be able to move around more since my husband hardly leaves the, uh, the, the flat, only when we drive for shopping and then he drives because it's a big car and I don't like to drive in a big car. And... So maybe the smaller car would mean that I, it's more uh, my kind of driving 
because I did a lot of driving when we had smaller cars and Ford Orion and the Suzuki. And this one is just a big one and, and it's just not my style of car. So maybe this is an explanation that I could give that dream, yeah. But so, yeah, uh, I'm rather puzzled. I see a tail of the cat. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's just the small ones crawling. Oh. <laughs> uh, Monia, the, huh? yeah? Monia, the, the two dreams both speak to you kind of um, going against what would be your normal values. One was, you know, hurting your somebody mm -hmm. you care about and the other is not telling your husband. So there seems to be a repetition of kind of you doing something outside of your normal moral code or your values or your normal behavior. You're kind of breaking out and doing something confusing or surprising even to yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, and in, as you described, um, that you're more mobile than your husband. That's kind of what the dream said. Mm -hmm. You have this car and mm -hmm. you're going to get around in the car. And um, I don't know, maybe you feel a little, maybe you have some feelings about the fact that you are more mobile than your husband, and maybe you don't want to point that out, or maybe it's hard to talk about or whatever. Well, he knows, and uh, I guess it's not really his kind of, yeah. So I, do, I guess it upsets him, but of course he doesn't talk about it, and... Uh, yeah, so I'm trying sort of to smooth out everything and and uh, just take it as natural. That's if I can move, I couldn't move that much uh, when I was in pain. So now I can move again, and he shouldn't be uh, offended by it. Or yeah, so we just together we are not quite one piece, two halves, but. Two three quarters. Let's put it this way. Yeah. Gatroud, what is your dream uh, attitude towards dreams? Actually, I'm not such a big dreamer. I mean, of course, I do like everybody, but <coughs> I'm not remembering much of my dreams. Um, and sometimes I do have like crystal clear memory. One day I dreamt that I come into, a, and I could really see it was a bar or something like that, but it was all glass. Around. So it was kind of um, on both sides and it was rather narrow. And in the middle, there was a, huge almost like a vase or so but it was um out of proportions it was not for for flowers this like a column of glass and in it were the kernels of um um pomegranate so filled and and I saw through through this yeah so across this this bar I saw a really handsome black man um, and we had kind of non-spoken interaction and it was so like I woke up and I could really almost draw it what happened but most of the time I just I don't remember when I wake up, there is nothing I could write down. So maybe I can try to practice that. But yeah, for me, this is the, there is a distinct difference between those almost over clear memories, very detailed and almost like um, in real in the real world, but with symbolic things and and just not being aware of anything. So I don't, 
I don't have much to say in the terms of, and I don't know the symbolic and I haven't read a book about it. <laughs> I'm I'm just skipping along with life in this. Well, I have lots of books about dreaming. And I gave up on lucid dreaming because I could, do it. I guess I talked about it. I could do it and then I sort of lost it and it hasn't come back yet. Um, but there is still another dream or a regular kind of dream that I move into a new apartment. And the last was completely empty with a beautiful view, a wide open window. And I was very happy to move into it without anything clogging it. So that was really, that I dreamt that about a couple of days ago. And when I wake up after such a dream, I feel content. And I'm not confused because I know it's getting, I'm getting there. But uh, these other dreams that really confuse me, um, yeah, I'm glad I could can talk about them with you now because it does make more sense now, yeah. Hmm. Did the one about your friend happen before the one about the moving and the view? No, no, no. That was yesterday. And he uh, he isn't too well, but still, uh, he isn't dead yet. So, <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So as for me, I had a many, many years where I wrote a lot of dreams. I have uh, booklets full like this, like, and I never read them again. Maybe it was two or three days later still, but I, I should go there. And But I fear that's always the same. I'm not sure. But I one of my topics in the dreams I very rarely dream about t people, but about trying to find a way or with a train or walking or with a car. And uh, so that was a very often a theme. And it always leaves me, left me at least in this, in this sort of um, a feeling of, mm, yeah, so a little bit oppressive, a little bit, not confused, but more um, let's say unhappy, not very uh, confident because uh, trying to find the way means that I haven't found it. So I try this one. I, I'm confident that's the right way and then I end up in somewhere which I've never seen and things like that. Um, lately, I for a long time I didn't write anything anymore. Now sometimes I write. I have my little laptop in the uh, in 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 my bedroom. Before by hand, often I couldn't see it anymore afterwards because when I half in 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 dream in in sleep, then I write over the other line and so on. And now typing is even not a good thing, and so. I'm reluctant to write a lot. Sometimes I really succeed to bring it over to, to the morning until I wake up. Then I think about it and I repeat it and I tell myself, you won't forget it because I'm awake at that time. And then during the day, I think, what was it? What was it? And it's forgotten. And it's so strange. I mean, you, I at least forget dreams much more easy than, easily than other things. Also, I was really sure this time I remember it, you know. <laughs> so at the moment, it's I, I'm happy that I don't dream for a long time. I don't dream horrible dreams, um, nightmares. I hardly ever know. Only this searching uh, moments, they are still there, but I'm not 
in in fear or anxious when I wake up normally, but it's sort sort of ah okay, I dreamt this. Mm -hmm. So so more more equanimity. How do you call that? Something like this, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I would like to know because I hope for some prophetic dreams. I would like to know how life goes on, <laughs> but no, obviously it doesn't work. I I used to be able to remember dreams. I don't so much anymore. I I'd, I'd say definitely at least for five years, maybe longer. Um, as sleep is harder to come by, <laughs> as sleep is not as sound as it used to be, I find that um, I don't remember my dreams as much. But I find it interesting. I used to have two repetitive dreams. The first dream that I would always have was that I was uh, a nurse again. And that I was in some life-saving situation and I didn't know what to do. So it was an anxiety, a dream similar to, you know, showing up at a, a test and realizing you didn't study for the test, that kind of thing <laughs> that people ha dream about. But this was, I was going to, um, I didn't know what to do. And um, I, it was obviously, you know, uh, something I was supposed to know, but I felt like I didn't know. Um, and somebody, uh, it, it was a serious situation. I had that dream every once in a while, probably every few months, maybe, or a couple times a year, I don't know, um, for decades. Mm -hmm. And it went away. And it was replaced by a different repetitive <laughs> dream. <laughs> and this one was more pleasant. This one was about um, my, my first crush from um, like ninth grade. So probably about 15, 14, 15 years old. Uh, and the dream was always about this unrequited love. You know, it was always about wanting him to know how much I cared for him or seeing if we could connect. And in some ways, it was the experience that I had in my uh, in my youth was that, you know, he was a first crush. And yet we spent, you know, four years in high school, not really ever reconnecting again, but he was always important. I always cared about him. So it was that sense of ongoing caring and always feeling connected to him. And the dream kind of represented that, but the dream was always about, we're not quite making that connection again. So it was always this impulse or this desire, um, not even sexual, just kind of more romantic, but caring. Um, and I'd have to say that dream probably went away about 10 years ago. And I haven't had any repetitive dreams that I can remember anyway. But I think it's interesting to have a repetitive dream for decades and then it kind of just disappears. It's weird. I've been wondering because you mentioned the turkey. Do you know how the turkey tradition started? Because cooking at how many pounds you said eighteen pounds turkey would be a nightmare for me. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't dream it, you do it. So it's just amazing. Where did, when did this tradition start in the States? And why Turkey of all wasn't it the pilgrims or yeah, the pilgrims the had a dinner with the um Native Americans Native, that but came why down turkey? to the feast. Why turkey? Well, because I guess they shot wild turkey. That was the game. And mm -hmm. that was a big enough bird mm -hmm. to feed a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else they would have had um, back then to feed a lot of people. So, yeah, they had to use whatever wild game there was. And the size of the turkey, it doesn't, I mean, once you're, once you're roasting a turkey and stuffing it, the only difference with the size is how long you have to cook it. But, you know, preparing the bird doesn't matter if it's at a 10 pound bird or a 20 pound bird, you're still going to have to do the same steps. You just have to cook it longer. But yeah. And then carving. Carving is always a big deal. So this is the dream of the tongue, no? To looking forward to, to the turkey this week. I will have here my, my new neighbors. Uh, he is American, and they will cook a turkey, and I'm invited. 
So they were looking around, who knows where to get the turkey from? And so I'm looking forward to that. Normally, when I was invited in other, when Mark was still alive with other American people, and there was so much to eat before, and when they arrived at the turkey, nobody <laughs> had any hunger anymore. And then there was all left, and I really love turkey, so it's a shame. I try not to eat too much this time and arrive at the turkey. So... Well, in Austria, we have the tradition of goose, martini. Yeah, goose. On the 11th of November, martini council. And yeah, I don't like it actually very much. I prefer duck. If I have a choice, I prefer to eat a duck. But it's tradition. So and my husband insists on it. Uh, how, did we, how did we pass over from dreams to Turkey? Well, it's a, to me, uh, baking a turkey would be a nightmare. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we come over to the to the habits of of this period of time of the year. We in Germany, we had the goose for Christmas in my family. The second day of Christmas, mm -hmm. the aunts were invited, and we had a goose. And, and, and a goose is not much stuff on. So we were about 10, 12 people. Everybody got a piece like this, and that was it. But what is your tradition in South Africa for Christmas? I mean, you have Christmas in 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 summer. So in summer, yes, but we well, when I grew up, we when I was still eating meat, of course, we um I grew up. My mom would make leg of lamb. Mm -hmm. very, that's a very South African dish. Um, but my sister, she she traveled a lot to the U.S. Um, in her early professional career, she brought the whole turkey thing into our space over Christmas, not over Thanksgiving. But it also died out. It became just too much, too much food, and yeah. It became yeah too exuberant, and um, yeah. So for us, it's not really something traditionally speaking because we have so many different cultures in South Africa. I mean, we have thirteen different tribes, um, and they all have very different customs. So for us, it's not a not like in the states, for example, or even you in Austria or Germany have a specific. Yeah, way of celebrating it. It's very variety. There's a lot of variety, and it's very diverse. Yeah, we. Yeah, I think also because we have also very different religions as well. That's what I wanted to ask. Uh, how far is Christianity uh, spread there? <clears throat> no, it's it's it, because of colonialism and imperialism. It, it came down from Europe, but in general, we have lots of Muslims, Indians, which are also um, Hindu. So we've got huge Hindu celebrations like the Festival of Lights and things like that happening. And then big Jewish community as well in South Africa. So um, very different types of religious affiliations. So there's not one you, know, you can say is overarching the others. Uh, Gertrude, I want I wondered uh, because I noticed that in Austria we are starting something like celebrating the season, Christmas season. So it starts now in November already and uh, goes on until next year. But uh, usually we just had uh, Advent, so the four weeks before Christmas, and the, the rest uh, with four candles. But now, um, well, we have already lights uh, in our window and other people as well, Christmas lights. And uh, so I'm really wondering, uh, and it's particularly dark, uh, right now so maybe this is why people 
have more lights in their window and we ordered some new decoration <laughs> so it's we really try to get light into this darkness yeah i think there's um there is a tendency of having earlier and earlier starting with a uh, speculatius with mm -hmm. marzipan mm -hmm. with uh, whatever uh, the with all the, the cookies, cookies and yeah, cookies, yeah. <laughs> uh, in the in the supermarket and and also the all the decoration um for me it's traditionally uh saint martin's on uh, november 11th when all this light thing starts oh, uh -huh. So, maybe. so and the kids going yeah. and uh, they have this uh, oh, like yeah. their lanterns and going uh, around celebrating Saint Martin's, and then and then we go further Advent. So so to to light a candle every Sunday in Advent, and the the twenty four um, Advent calendar with the little doors and things like that so that's that's very i i noticed that i'm frozen most of the time now but don't worry i'm still holding on <laughs> <laughs> you're still there you're coming uh, back good experience yeah and I, I think so when i when i did the 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 brain training and everything um, and I went, when I was working at the serotonin di uh, diet center, uh, it it's um, so premenstrual. You have this PMS uh, syndrome. Uh, then you have the seasonal affective disorders. When the light goes down, or the hormones, then people tend to um, have yeah binge eating or yeah have cravings and and it's it's like the serotonin goes down as if you would sleep mm -hmm. so it would winter hibernating so to say and sweets and light bring you back oh, yeah. up right, 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 right. so so yeah. it's also physiology that is craving for mm -hmm. cookies and for light to to have a better mood and not be depressed and uh, or just <laughs> well, uh, over the head or so right. yeah because we discovered uh, lederach swiss chocolate yeah it's the most one of the most expensive ones and my daughter got me an advent calendar so it was the 20th. yeah yeah and it's just uh it's it's uh, devilishly good. <laughs> so it really, it really, and I didn't know that it existed. And we have two shops in there now already, mm. not just one. Yeah. And uh, I came, oh, yeah, this is another topic. I came across it because of a comedian, a Swiss comedian, who uh, I have to admit, I have become addicted to YouTube clips. So I start with one clip and then I go to the next and the next and the next and the next and, and it goes on for an hour. And this is how I did, uh, discovered this chocolate because he did a comparative testing of chocolates, Swiss chocolates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, I, I'm uh, just, I'm, yeah, yeah. Going, going back to the physiology, I, I think that is something that started that tradition mm. so that people really needed to have more carbohydrates in the winter yeah, too. Yeah. 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 That means and, that... and when I was working with those people, uh, I sent them out to, to do exercise and um, during the, the midday hours mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that they are out in the sun or at least light and, uh, because some people they they go out of the house, uh, it's dark and they come back, it's mm -hmm. dark, and then they are indoors for the for the lunch. Yeah. So so we we try to to be productive 
in an environment that suppresses productivity, that doesn't mm -hmm. support it. And, and yeah, and people gain weight, have cravings and, and all that stuff. So, so we had a diet to support that and without all the sugar. <laughs> yeah. Coming back to to the Christmas rites or the, yeah, let's say this, as Christmas in South Africa is in summer, it's not valid, no? The darkness and everything, which for us is so normal that mm -hmm. we need sugar and whatever, what you are talking about. In the other part of the world down there, uh, it's all upside down. <laughs> Yeah, but Heidi, we also, um, I mean, it's also a tradition to have lots of sweet things and cake, but in summer we're very active, you know, because it's so sunny, and it's warm, lots of activities outdoors, um, so people need a lot of energy, obviously, but for different reasons, mm -hmm. so, but there's also lots of, yeah, you know, all kinds of biscuits and cake and stuff, we have a specific cake, it's made out of lots of different dried fruits and nuts and stuff. A Christmas cake that people bake for Christmas, um, which is very South African as well. And in traditionally, it was actually cooked in in a cloth in a pot outside. Mm -hmm. But it has a very nice texture. It's very rich, very rich. So you won't eat a lot of it. But that's also something that people do here as well. And ginger beer, they make your own ginger beer. Um, so there, there are some, some, some things like that's happening. But the sweet thing is also lots of, lots of delicious, decadent things, just because of the celebration of the Christmas period and the likes. You see, in in Europe, in your summer, you almost some parts of Europe literally close down. You go on holidays for three, two, three months. We don't have that year at all. We continue, although we have a short break over Christmas and New Year. But immediately after that, people start working again. So we don't really have a summer break like you would have in Europe. And how is it in winter? I mean, do you have some rituals for the darkness in winter? No, not at all. No, not at all. Uh, some It depends also, not as a culture, generally speaking, no. Um, you would have people celebrating the solstice, the winter solstice, but mm -hmm. it's it's not something that's general because of religious views and things. Something that's really celebrated a lot, but we don't have those dark those type of rituals in winter now. I I was thinking, Monia, you you said it's so dark outside. I think it's also because there is no snow around and it's raining all day long. And uh, so, so there is more darkness than should be or usually is. It's, I think this, this year it feels darker than normal. It's just trees outside. So I don't see the lights of the next houses. So that's yeah. dark. But I was just uh, thinking now that maybe I'm watching these YouTube clips because they also have a, they're laughing a lot. This laughter band or whatever it is. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, I don't dare to mention which one I'm looking at because I never looked at it before because I thought, well, and now on the YouTube clips, it's the Big Bang Theory. It's about three, uh, four scientific nerds and all of a sudden, I find it funny. So, <laughs> and it's it's uh, I don't know. It's, it's yeah. just something familiar now, and it feels, yeah. It and it's never never really brutal or or so. It's it's yeah. It's it's pleasant, and maybe it's also lifting my serotonin level. Endorphins as well. And eating chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Why I watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, when, when you laugh, it's the endorphins and it gets the adrenaline out of the body when you laugh. Mm -hmm. So it's the, mm -hmm. the body movement and the lips up mm -hmm. is, um, yeah. 
in dolphins. I don't laugh that much. It's just that this laughter uh, that comes from the, and I, I smile. Let's put it. Yeah, in, yeah, smile. that's enough. But uh, it's hilarious how people really they laugh at the right because it's in front of an audience so it's not just taped it's in front of an audience and also some very interesting background so that it's really a timed uh, there's nothing by coincidence so it's really timed attacked uh, and it's quite amazing uh, they are good actors and I took, it took me some time to recognize that they are really good actors in it well I if if you I like half, if you like half hour sitcoms and and I'm a big fan of that. Have you ever heard of Mom, M O M, Mom? No, no. Yeah, that's a really good fun about, about fun what? Mom. Yeah, about what is it? Uh, oh, mom? it's about um, a mother and a daughter. They're both adults, and they both have addiction problems, and it's funny. It's just okay. Really funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I try to find it. I just Google it, and next time I talk to, about mom. <laughs> yeah, you can also share the links, and then I can put it yeah. under the under the video. And uh, yeah, yeah, YouTube is a very addictive. Uh, I think so, at least, and it's also good what you can find. Some things you can't find because even uh, two of my videos have been suppressed, have been canceled. And I said, oops, <laughs> now it's not even with me. <laughs> it's a, you know which ones? Uh, it was from 2020 when I, we did, I don't know if it was here, some chat around Corona. And so Corona mm -hmm. is taboo. Uh, we need, you know, are allowed to have an opinion and so and I thought and I still believed in all that shit in this time and so it couldn't have been anything you know against their ideas but <laughs> I got the message I think two weeks ago that they suppressed the, <laughs> the they tell, video they tell but, you when they suppress it uh -huh. yeah I got the, the notice and I said oh no it's crazy Censorship is too much if they censor even this. I mean, <laughs> so they, I had a good they laugh. let you know they let you know they censored it, but they don't give you a reason. No, they no, no. It's against the 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 guidelines, but they don't say what it is, and so on. it is just censored. You know, <laughs> absurd. And another one I just had um, I had uh, recorded uh, some talks. On, on medicine and I put it unlisted on a different channel for my brother so he could watch them. And even there was something about the brain, it was taken off too. Even unlisted things, you know, so. But anyway, what you can see normally that's good. Uh, I mean, I enjoy it, I, I watch a lot and. Um... Yeah, it's just hard to get off one track because once yeah. you start, with the Big Bang Theory, then you get more and more and more and more from this. And so it's true that you get always the same things, more or less, no? Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. That's bubble building. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or Trevor Noah, um, South African in in the States. It's he's so great. <laughs> I really love it. So his perspective on the world and yeah. Do share these links and I will be happy to to watch them and to to link it. I think we are more or less arrived at the end and it was a nice session how we managed to go from one topic to the other. <laughs> <Bing>. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe have nice dreams tonight. <laughs> you have a nice day, Christine. We are more near. It's really pitch black the outside. I mean, yeah. really black. The the moon is coming up, but very slowly. So when the there is, is what? That's what it looks here. Yeah. Well, oh yeah. Yeah. 
I was going to say, Monia's going to dream about killing a turkey tonight. <laughs> Maybe we are all dreaming this. Maybe this is not really happening. Yeah. N next time well, we will talk about as long as it how we did it. After me and gobble, gobble, gobble. <laughs> it's a strange animal. Yeah. And what is nice, we did the recommendation of Gertraud to laugh. And so we have yeah. some more. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's good for the hormones. Yeah, you know, one minute. <laughs> but I'm laughing, really laughing. It's much better. <laughs> but that helps. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay, hmm. well, next time in two weeks or in two weeks we meet schedule. again. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. Have a good time. And this is yeah. Christine, enjoy Bye. your Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and your cooking. The big yeah. cooking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, bye -bye. guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.